Tonight, we've got details on YouTube's new music service. We'll also tell you how Google's driverless cars are designed to break the law. And Apple's stock price closes at a record high. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 154 for Tuesday, August 19th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all your financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. I'm Mike Elgin. Let's get right to the tech feed. YouTube's long-rumored music service will be called YouTube Music Key, according to an exclusive at Android Police. The blog also reported that the service will offer offline listening, an optional audio-only interface, and ad-free playback. We also learned the price, $9.99 per month. That subscription covers both Music Key and also the existing Google Play Music service. The most interesting feature of YouTube Music Key, according to several reports, is that it'll feature plenty of music that isn't available anywhere else, including remixes, live concerts, and more. What we don't know is exactly when the service will become available to the public. TechCrunch's Sarah Perez broke some good news today for people who like to take pictures with their iPhones. Google's Photosphere camera app has come to the iOS at last. The free app enables you to take 360-degree panoramas that can be viewed in an immersive interactive mode. The Photosphere app has existed on the Android platform, first exclusively on Google's own Nexus phones, then as part of Android 4.2. While panorama photo apps are common, Photosphere is special because the images can be uploaded to Google Maps and Google+, Plus, where they can be viewed in the interactive mode. And also because the pictures cover not only left to right, but top to bottom for a totally immersive experience. Google's self-driving cars can break the speed limit. The project's lead software engineer, Dmitry Dolgoff, told Reuters that nearby cars are speeding and when Google's algorithms see that and decide that it's dangerous to obey the law, the software will hit the gas and exceed the speed limit by up to 10 miles an hour. So when self-driving cars eventually come out and you get that ticket, just forward it to Google's headquarters in Mountain View, California. Steve Ballmer has quit the Microsoft Board of Directors. After 14 years on the board, the company's second-ever CEO and currently the biggest shareholder has resigned in order to devote more time to the basketball team he just bought, the Los Angeles Clippers. In his resignation letter posted today on the Microsoft website, Ballmer said he would spend his time on, quote, a combination of the Clippers' civic contribution, teaching, and study. Sounds very reflective. The 58-year-old Ballmer stepped down from the CEO position in February, a job he held since January of 2000, and finally, and finalized his $2 billion purchase of the Clippers only on August 12th. Well, coming up, what percentage of your social media posts generate engagement? You might be surprised how low the average is. And next up, we'll chat with Harrison Weber about Apple's record-breaking stock price. But first, I want to talk about your money. Managing your money can be a challenge. And the good news is that a free and secure tool called Personal Capital makes it easy. Personal Capital solves two barriers to growing your wealth. The first barrier is that it's hard to keep track of stocks, 401ks, bank accounts, and investments, all on different sites with different usernames and different passwords. Personal Capital brings all your accounts and assets onto one single screen on your computer, phone, or tablet with real-time and, and intuitive graphs. They even offer an award-winning Android app that you can download free from the Google Play Store. The app supports Google's Android Wear smartwatch platform, putting timely financial information right on your wrist. The second barrier to growing your wealth is that you pay someone to manage your money, and you're probably paying too much. Personal Capital shows how much you're overpaying in fees and how to reduce those fees. You also get tailored advice on optimizing your investments. So why wait? Signing up takes just a minute and it pays big dividends. Personal Capital gives you a new clarity and total transparency to make better investment decisions right away. To set up your free account, go to personalcapital.com TN2. And remember that Personal Capital is free and it's the smart way to grow your money. And we thank Personal Capital for their support of Tech News Tonight. Well, Apple shares beat their record high of two years ago. VentureBeat news editor Harrison Weber joins us to talk about the news. Welcome, Harrison. Thanks for having me. So um, why are investors all of a sudden so bullish on Apple? So they've been bullish on Apple since around, uh, let's see, mid-2013. Uh, and so this has been a gradual growth 
Uh, and also, uh, the stock split sent Apple up pretty high. Uh, now it's reaching its, uh, it's, it's surpassing a previous peak. Uh, and, and it's safe to say that this is on rumors. Uh, rumors of the iWatch, rumors of the next iPhone, and other updates supposedly coming uh, before the end of the year. Now, is in addition to the rumors, is this a vote of confidence for Tim Cook's leadership at Apple? Certainly, certainly. I mean, it's become clear the kind of leader that Tim Cook is. Very different from, from Jobs, uh, as, as many pundits have remarked. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's a combination of a vote of confidence for, for Cook, but it's also kind of a vote that they think that Apple will have that next big thing again. Now, like you said, it's based on rumors, but are, are they hearing different rumors than we are? Because from what I can tell, the rumors are all over the map. They're shipping an iWatch next month. No, they're delaying the iWatch till next year. They're building Sapphire screens on all their phones. No, they're delaying that next, till next year, too. What do the investors know? What rumors are the investors hearing that the rest of us aren't hearing? Well, uh, honestly, nothing is clear about what Apple will launch. Uh, some analysts will make it seem as if it's you know set in stone. Uh, my favorite thing to say about analysts is that they're always wrong, and that's usually true half the time at least. Um, I mean, it's not even just what they will launch, but what the, the product itself will be. Some people say iWatch will be full iOS. Others say that it will be running something different. Uh, right now, it's just uncertainty, and people are just willing to make the bet. Investors, rather, are willing to make the bet. Because, I mean, I would not be surprised at all if we just saw an, iter an iterative iPhone update. Other pundits would have you believe that the iWatch is definitely coming. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm just not willing to make a bet on that. It's, they're just rumors right now. Now, speaking of analysts, Morgan Stanley says that Apple could ship 60 million iWatches in their first year of sales. That seems awfully high. I don't know what that's based on because uh, sales of smartwatches from other companies is nowhere near not even close to that number. Is that even remotely conceivable? I believe uh, on Daring Fireball today, uh, they pulled up an old old uh, figures. I think last holiday season, Apple sold around 50 million smartphones, uh, just in smartphones entirely. And so basically, that suggests that Apple will not only sell 20 million more units, uh, but it's a brand new category that they've just created, and all of a sudden, they're going to pull that much in. I mean, I've seen some predictions that go as high as 70 million. Uh, you said you said uh, sorry. You said sixty. I've seen predictions mm -hmm. as high as seventy. Uh, but again, this this is a product that that doesn't exist on the market and may not exist at all. Uh, so it's definitely a little bit of a stretch to say something that's not even uh, technically real uh, will sell that many units. It's not even real. Uh, it's not just uh, unreal. It's also we don't have a price. We don't have <laughs> we don't know what it looks like. We don't know if there are going to be multiple uh, versions or just one. So that is a bold prediction. We'll see if uh, that pans out. Now, shouldn't Samsung's troubles make investors believe that Apple will suffer the same trend lines and for the same reason, nam namely lower profits due to increased competition and mostly from China? So it depends. Uh, I believe that Apple uh, has done extremely well in the high-end market for China. And so I believe, I think a stat circulating earlier this year is they, they own about 80% as of last year of the premium and smart mode market. That's uh, $500 plus smartphones in China. Um, Apple is facing competition in China. And uh, one of the companies, uh, Xiaomi, which is uh, known in the U.S. as the, the Apple of China, uh, has done very well. And they're um, kind of looking to expand outside of China. But for now, Apple really owns the premium market there and elsewhere, or, or at least they're doing quite well elsewhere. There's no reason to think that they would decline. Uh, it, it's more these these kind of skyrocket predictions for things like iWatches that, that seem less uh, realistic. Harrison Weber writes at the Venture Beat website, and he is the news editor there. Uh, Harrison, where can people follow you on social media? Yeah, follow me at Harrison Weber on Twitter. All right, well, thank you for joining us on Tech News tonight. Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, a new study found that 99% of the posts on social networks created little or no engagement at all. No comments, no shares, no likes. The study was conducted by Social Flow and looked at 1.6 million social posts on Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. The good news is that the most successful 1% generated massive engagement. They also found some useful information about what kinds of posts do best. Real-time posts, those responding to current events, got the most engagement, especially in the media and entertainment industries, not so much in tech, oddly enough, while posts scheduled for optimal times using tools like Hootsuite didn't do as well as expected. 
Well, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Mike Gilgan. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.